Hey, welcome back to Fix It Friday, the weekly YouTube series where we talk about video game console repairs, mods, and restorations. So this week I have kind of a, a little departure from what I normally do. Um, so as many of you guys know, we're going to have the uh, Uplink LI Retro event this coming weekend, and so I've been pretty busy with that, and so have all of my friends, and uh, and so yeah, as a result, I'm kind of going to make a departure from doing a console repair this week, and instead I'm going to be talking about something that's kind of a console, which is the Super Game Boy. So for those of you that don't know, what the Super Game Boy is, is basically a, it's basically a Nintendo Game Boy built inside of a Super Nintendo cartridge. So this connects up to your Super Nintendo, and it allows you to play uh, the original black and white Game Boy games. Uh, it's a really nice, uh, you know, feature because you can play these games on the big TV, but there are some limitations to it. One big one is that it relies on the Super Nintendo for its clock speed instead of having uh, an internal crystal oscillator to tell it uh, the correct speed to run. So when you play Game Boy games using this device, what ends up happening is that the game speed is about 4% faster than normal. Uh, you can really notice this mostly with the music, but, you know, depending on the game it is, you might also notice that the gameplay timing isn't just, you know, just isn't quite right. Uh, now, in Japan, uh, Nintendo eventually fixed this, so they made a newer version of this called the Super Game Boy 2, and that had its own internal clock, and it had a link port so that you could connect up your Super Game Boy 2 to another Game Boy and do things like, you know, exchange Pokemon or, or play Link-based uh, games, you know, Link uh, connection-based games. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's kind of a bummer that we didn't get that here. And so, you know, you, you can certainly get one of those Super Game Boy 2s from Japan, but you can also take your original Super Game Boy and make it better. And that's what this little chip here comes in. Um, this is the Super Game Boy Clock mod, and it's a, uh, a little chip that is available from a guy named QWERTY MOTO, <laughs> which is a great name, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's available on Tindy. I'll uh, put a link in the description so you guys can check it out. So, yeah, what we're going to do today is we're going to take this thing apart, we're going to install this uh, clock mod, and then I have, you know, this is my childhood Super Game Boy, and I also have a second one lying around. Uh, so we're going to compare and contrast the two and see if we can notice any differences in either gameplay or sound or both. Okay, let's get to it. Alright, so taking apart a Super Game Boy is pretty easy. All you need to do is grab a game bit uh, screwdriver, and this is the same size that one would need if you're opening up Super Nintendo cartridges, um, or probably in 64 as well. Like, you know, a variety of carts uh, use this size, so these are readily available on Amazon or eBay or whatever for super cheap. Um, so yeah, opening it up is trivial. You just gotta take these four screws out. Alright. And uh, pardon all the sounds of wind and rain and stuff, because right now there's a torrential downpour going on, so you'll just have to humor me on that. All right, so it just kind of hinges up. You see there's like these little these little tabs right here, and that's true of any Super Nintendo game. And uh, yeah, so now I just got to take out these two screws, and uh, this is basically the Super Game Boy. And, and like I said before, it's effectively a Game Boy um, with all the functions um, that, that a real one does, except it doesn't have a screen, and, and like I said, it's relying on the Super Nintendo for the clock. Okay, so to start, what we're going to do is we're going to be removing three components. We're going to be removing R1, R7, and C15, so those three little surface mount components. Not too bad. So to do surface mount parts, I add a little bit of flux, I heat up both sides, kind of go back and forth rapidly, and then there we go, it's gone. And I'm just going to rotate this for convenience. And we're going to do the same thing over here to C15 and to R7. There we go. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is just grab some solder braid and we're going to clean those up. Alright, so we're going to use solder braid to just get rid of the excess solder and flatten out some of these. Especially R1 because R1 we're going to be soldering directly onto again. And so, you know, basically what I do with solder braid is I add some fresh flux and then I just hold my iron, I pass it over like that. And now you can see 
that all of that excess um, solder has been removed and uh, all of those contact points are nice and flat. I'm going to do the same thing over here to R1. When you're holding the, um, the braid, you got to also make sure that you, know, you still have a fresh part of the braid. Like if it comes too saturated with solder, it's not going to wick up any of the remaining stuff. You also want to be careful with your hands because this stuff gets hot and if you're holding on too close to the, to the area, or you're just holding on for too long, yeah, you're totally going to end up burning yourself. But there we go. Okay, so that is it. It's a very simple procedure just to prepare the board for the installation. Just have to remove those three components. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to install the board and it's going to basically go like this. So we're going to we're going to basically um line it up like that. And you've got a few places, four places to connect to. You've got this giant ground plane over here. You've got both points for resistor 1 and then we're also going to tack it on right here where capacitor 5 is located. So uh, so yeah we're going to get right to that right right now. Alright so like before we're going to add some flux just to make sure we have nice easy connections here because all this stuff is kind of small. And what I'm going to do is start by just tacking it into place. So I'm going to add a little solder to just the iron here hold it down and I'm going to start with the ground plane here. Just enough to line it up and tack it in. I mean the only place where it really matters a lot are these three points here. You want to make sure that they are close and lined up. And yeah, I didn't quite have that lined up. Let me try that again. Okay, so now that guy is locked in, and I'm going to go ahead and start doing the remaining points. Okay. There we go. That's the ground plane all set. Okay. And finally, we're just going to connect that. Okay, so that's four points that we've now soldered into place. And uh, yeah, that's actually it. That's all we had to do. So it's a very simple installation. Um, I know it's surface mount soldering, but um, I hope I've demonstrated that it's not difficult to do. Um, all right, so now that this thing is fully installed, we're going to go ahead and reassemble the cartridge. And I have two cartridges to compare. I've got a stock one, and then I have uh, my newly modded one. And we'll see if we can tell the difference between the two. Okay, back in one second. Alright guys, so there you have it. Um, hopefully those two recordings side by side will help make it clear that um, with this new mod installed, the Super Game Boy runs at the correct speed and the sound plays right and uh, the game timing is also going to be uh, correct compared to, um, you know, a real piece of a hardware, a Game Boy. I think the only thing missing, of course, is that you don't have a link port connected to this, but you know, honestly that's not something I'm going to use. If I ever use a Super Game Boy, it's always just going to be to play my Game Boy games on the big screen. And now I can, you know, do that with a really accurate experience, and uh, and that's why I did this in the first place. All right, so if you guys like this content, then, you know, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up, and, uh, you know, it would be awesome if you could subscribe to the channel. Uh, I have videos like this coming out every every Friday, and uh, definitely check out the upcoming LI Retro Ump Link. That is going to be tomorrow, uh, on Saturday and Sunday. So, uh, you know, we've got lots of great panelists. Uh, we have free play. We have a ton of stuff to do. Uh, I highly encourage you to check it out. Okay, so thanks again for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye!